at the club through that position. In that, I, I don't know too many people in team sports that have won that much. Mm. Um, and it's hard to it's hard to try and um, explain what what keeps you motivated to keep winning at, um, at all costs like that. But uh, but you know, I have to say. Um, in, in large measures, that that comes back to Fab and his um, just never-ending drive. <laughs> because uh, linked to that, yeah. the so just for a lot of people won't know his backstory, and you'll know it a hell of a lot better than I do. Do you want to just give people like a flavour of where he's from, how he grew up, and almost you know because it adds it's it's a big part of the story. And then in a second, I'll ask you about how almost. Because he's a, he's a, like almost a natural born leader. I know he talks in schools, but actually, it's almost the impact that can have on a business. But just for people that don't know who he is, would you want to give him like a thirty second? Yeah, kind of yeah. Back? So Fab, Fab, Fab uh, by name is Fabulous Flournoy. That's his that's his name. That's his true name, Fabulous. And he grew up in the Bronx, uh, um, which in itself, with with a you know. A male with a name like Fabulous would no doubt make it difficult. Um, so his uh, his whole history growing up in in New York um, became about um, getting engaged with the sport of basketball quite late on for him, about fourteen, fifteen years of age, because he found out that he could um, uh, uh, get a pair of shoes from the coach of the club. Uh, a pair of basketball shoes if he if he turned up and played. Um, from there, he went to uh, got himself out of New York by a basketball into the college system, junior college, and then McNeese uh, State University in in uh, in Texas. Um, got his degrees uh, and then moved into professional basketball. Moved to Birmingham, UK in '94, I think. And then, and then played until he was forty-six. Yeah, literally. Uh, we, we, you know, until last September, he's broken pretty much all records in in the league in the, in, in this country. Got an MBE along the way, uh, a Commonwealth Games bronze medal with England, mm-hmm. because by this time he received his passport and was playing for England. Uh, and um, was. Uh, to cap it all in September last year, offered an assistant coach role at the Toronto Raptors in the NBA, the team that had just won the uh, the NBA championship uh, um, in the July before. It is a, an incredible kind of story, but almost based on that, because I don't know the guy. Like I've, I've trained against just when you needed spare players, like I played against Darius and different things, yeah. and that's interesting. But actually, I don't know Fab. But what, as a person, what was he like? And what were his like kind of character traits? Uh, he had many and varied, actually. Okay. Uh, very, it could be very, very lighthearted, very, very free spirited, but at the same time, uh, when a job needed to be done, very, very focused. Players will tell you of um, three and four hour video sessions. Um, where he would labour a point, um, you know, to the nth degree, just just to really get across how important a specific area of the game was. You know, he knew they got it third time, but he, he would tell them fifty or sixty times. To... But, but I think you know that's almost some of the the links between business and sports. It's the behaviours, it's the things that you do that actually make a big difference. And it was almost just, you know, I always like to like learn from people when I can. And I'll ask you later about kind of good advice. But it was just, you know, his story is quite incredible. But it's also interlinked massively with the Eagles kind of story. Uh, so that's why I kind of wanted to to ask. 